Welcome to Maze Leco Challenge. Today's problem is counting bits. Given a non-negative integer number num, for every number i in the range of 0 all the way to the number, calculate the number of 1s in their binary representation. Alright, so if you know anything about binary representation, you know that each position represents a number to the power of 2. So the first position represents 1, second position represents 2, third is 4, fourth one is eight, so on and so forth. So if you want to represent one, it's like this. If you want to represent two, it's like that. Three would be um, two, two and one, which calculates three, and if you like, one to eight, it's, it's like this. So great, how can we solve this? Um, well, there's bound to be some sort of pattern here, something that we could use to our advantage to not just generate the binary um, representation and add up the ones every single time. If you look at the hints, it says you should make use of what you've already produced. So that's interesting. And as well as thinking about the range, 2 to 3, 4 to 7, all these represent are the position for the inside the binary representation. So I'll go to the whiteboard and try to uh, explain it a little bit better. All right, so here's a binary representation of all the numbers from 0 to 15. I've written out the number of 1's in green and I've divided the groups in blue according to the number of uh, places like numbers that's going to be added for each binary uh, position. So at first we want to see if we notice any patterns and it's easy to get lost in looking at the green numbers like you can see there is a pattern, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, 2, 2, 3, 2, 3, 3, 4, and think, hey, maybe I can figure out the mathematical equation to this pattern and then implement that to, to solve this problem. But let's not focus on that. Let's try to look more at the binary representations and see if you notice anything um, in terms of patterns. Like, let's start at the first position. We see that pattern goes like 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, all the way through down, right? Second position goes 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Uh, third position goes 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and, and so on and so forth. So how can we use that to our advantage to think of a um, algorithm to generate our numbers? Well, let's look at the top four, right? and only look at the last two positions, we see top one goes like 0, 0, 0, 1, and top one goes 1, 0, 1, 1. And what's the difference between these two and these two? Well, the only difference is on the second half, we add one digit one uh, to all the numbers. If you notice carefully, 0, 1, 0, 1 always remains, remains the same. In the same way, in the next group, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 always also remains the same. The only thing that get, gets added is this 1 here. So that's useful because what we begin to realize is how about we build up our list and at every iteration add to that list just 1. So we'll start with 0 and now we'll append to our results 1 or, or 1 to the uh, list that we had before. So now we'll have 0, 1. Now, for the next list, we'll have 0, 1 in our original list, and we'll add 1 each time, and that'll become 1, 2. And the same way, now we have 0, 1, 1, 2. Now just add 1 to these. So now it's going to be 1, 2, 2, 3. And just continue on building up this result, um, and that should help us solve our, our problem. Um, like, if you take out all these one, zero, uh, the fourth position here, you'll notice that the both these groups, like the numbers, are actually the same. Like just subtract these and take a look at what it looks like. It's actually the same. The only difference is these ones. Uh, so that's going to help us solve this. All right, so now that we have some intuition to how we want to code this out, let's begin by initializing our output. And we already know it's going to be a list. And we can start with 0 because the very first number, we know it's zero inclusive, so zero will always be the first one. Now, we want to have some sort of loop, right? And ultimately, the way that I saw was the, the most useful was 
simply getting the length of our output and making sure that that is less than the num that we have um, been given. Now, what do we do? Well, we want to build upon what we've already um, built in our output, right? And we want to add one to each one of one of the items inside of our list. So how would we do that? Well, we could just simply use an extend function and say i plus one for all of the i's in output. And that's going to um, continually build up our result set. But there is one problem. It's not necessarily true that we're going to get a number that fits in all of the numbers inside of our um, position for the binary binary representation, right? So what we'll have to do then is actually return the output only up to the number. Um, and it's actually number plus one because it's going to be inclusive. So let's make sure this runs. You can see, oh, my answer is zero one. That's not right. Let's see, what did I mess up? Maybe it's um, length zero equal to num. Yeah, so I think I had to include that number. Okay, so let's make sure this gets accepted. Yep. Yeah, so this uh, solution looks very simple, but it's actually pretty hard to come up with because unless you've seen these sorts of problems before or you uh, can see that pattern getting built up, like these hint without these hints, I would have never gotten this solution. So um, definitely bitwise is not a very easy uh, type of problem. So it's just going to take practice to get better at it. Thank you.